how to take power numbers and structure workouts an entire season around using the intensity numbers. Now zone four, this is your threshold pace. It's not gonna be okay though, it's, no, it's gonna be awful. Good morning, Trainiacs. All the fun Zwift games are potentially coming to an end very quickly. Now, I'm not saying that I'm getting off of Zwift, but I was warned, we'll call it, by Coach Pat, that the two month off season is about to come to an end and we're gonna start getting into some actual, real structured, purposeful training. And that's one of the downsides of Zwift is that you kind of just go and you mess around, you hit hills and you attack people and get on, like not in a bad way, but you get on their wheel and you try to beat them and outpace them. And you're not really doing a proper structured workout with certain specific power numbers that you're trying to hit. Now in relation to that today, we're gonna have a chat about how to take power numbers if you're able to train with a power meter and structure workouts an entire season around using the intensity numbers that you get from power. More power! But first, I'm gonna go ahead and do this workout. Okay, let's get a few things straightened away. Number one, to start training with power zones, you need to start by doing an FTP test. It's a functional threshold power test. And if you're wondering how to do that, I'm not gonna go into it here, but you can go check out the link to the video up somewhere in there. And in there I explain how to do an FTP test. To do that, you're going to need a power meter. And I recommend the PowerTap P1 power pedals. They're the pedals that I've used. I've never had any problems with them. I haven't tried any other power meter, but DC Rainmaker has tried dozens of power meters and the P1 power pedals are his go-to. Right now, they're on sale for about $999. I will put a link in the description below. It'll be, if, It'll be an affiliate link. It won't cost you anything extra, but if you buy those power pedals in the 24 hours after clicking that link, we get a small commission. So it helps us out, thank you. And my guess is that those P1 pedals at $9.99 are priced as low as they're gonna get. They've gone through two price drops and PowerTap has hinted to me personally that it lends itself towards another update in the next year or so. So if you get those pedals, you're not gonna be upset. And then the last thing that I'll say is that we use power zones on a scale of one to seven. One being the easiest, seven being the hardest. We'll start with power zone one. This is basically your recovery pace. It is 55% or less of your FTP number. You really don't train in this. This is like the intensity of going for a walk. You would train at this level for less than an hour because if you're training at this level, you're doing it for recovery. You're not doing it for fitness. So you're not doing yourself any favors by going for two hours or three or four hours at this super low pace. You're kind of just using it to actually get on the bike on a recovery day. Now zone two, this is 56 to 75% of your FTP. This is your endurance pace. This would be the top end of where you'd race an Ironman and you wanna do training at this level for two plus hours. This should be a level that you can sustain all the time, but it does feel slightly challenging. Not like zone one, which is like taking a bath. Next zone, obviously, zone three. That's 76 to 90% of your FTP. This is your tempo pace. It's starting to feel slightly hard, but not so hard that you can't stay in it for an hour to two hours. This, this is where you might do a short morning group ride during the week. However, it's a little bit of no man's land because it's not intense enough to really make gains, but it's not low enough to build your aerobic base. So this is like a gray area. You don't wanna train in here too much. The bottom end of this is actually where you would race, say, a half Ironman. Now zone four, this is your threshold pace. This is 91 to 105% of your FTP. You should be able to hold this 
for anywhere between about six and 20 minutes. This is, let's say you're doing a group ride and the group picks up for a long surge stretch. That's kind of what it feels like. This kind of training going over your FTP slightly is how you start slowly bumping up that FTP for longer and longer intervals. Because if you think about it, your FTP is 100% and it's a 20 minute test. And if you can hold 106% of your FTP for 20 minutes, probably gonna just like, it's just math. It's gonna get higher. Now zone five, this is 106 to 120% of your FTP. This is where things start feeling really tough. It's what I did this morning. You can hold it for somewhere around two to six minutes, even at just two minutes, I was dying, yo. Doing work at this intensity is really good for building your overall cycling strength. This is where you start recruiting more muscle fibers than you would at any of the other zones because just to be able to do it, you need to recruit more of your leg and your body and your arms and your brain to be able to get it done. Now zone six is 121 to 150% of your FTP. This is building your anaerobic capacity, your outright raw strength, and you're doing intervals of anywhere from 30 seconds to two minutes in this case. This is gonna hurt, son. Now last on the list obviously is zone seven, and this is 150% and over your FTP number. These are anywhere up to 30 second sprints. These are pops of speed, really just getting your body into an outright painful place. And it's kind of like, it's more mental and it's a little bit neuromuscular teaching your brain and your body that it's okay to go into that pain cave. It's not gonna be okay though, it's, no, it's gonna be awful. And where you wanna do most of your training is out from race season, you wanna do a lot of training in zone two to build up your aerobic base and a lot of training in zones four, five, six, seven, building up your strength and your speed. And So let's say that this is three or four months out from your race and your race is up here. As you start getting closer to your race, these numbers start getting closer together. So you start bringing up your long steady efforts closer to your race pace and you start bringing down the amount of really hard, super intense work that you have. And instead of doing three, five, six, 10 minute efforts really, really hard, you're doing tiny little pops. And most of the work that you're doing close to a race is at that zone two, three, whatever your ideal race pace is. There you go. Bike training intensities and a full loop around the bike telling you about it. We are dynamic today. If you aren't already subscribed, please consider doing so. If you are already a Trainiac, thank you. Share this with your favorite bike training partner and let them know that you plan on going zone seven all year next year. It's just gonna happen. All right, I'm off to finish the flooring and try Terran HQ. Later.